saw the dead. I want you to notice that word, dead. Small and great stand before God. Do you see that? I saw the great, the dead, small and great stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And look what it says. And the dead were judged out of those things. The Bible says that the dead will be judged. Look at verse 13. Look what it says. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. You got to get this understanding out of, out of your head, okay? We consider death a physical death. When someone dies physically, we call them dead. That's not what the Bible calls the dead. The Bible never refers to a believer as being dead. Your body may no longer be inhabited and your body may be, you know, underground. But that person, if they were saved, is not dead. They are alive and well with the Lord Jesus Christ. So what the Bible considers dead is someone who goes to hell. Death is actually being in hell. When you get to hell, that's when you're dead according to the Bible. Let me tell you something. This man right here will never die. Because I will never see the flames of hell. I will never experience hell because I've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm, you know, and if you're saved, you will never die. We, will make, we might say you're dead, but we'll be incorrect. Because you'll be in heaven. They that have done good unto the resurrection, look what it says, of life. And they that, are, that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Do you see that? See, you could be resurrected to life, or you could be resurrected, the resurrection of damnation. See, the word resurrection doesn't mean be brought back to life. The word resurrection means this, to be raised up. That every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. See, here's what's going to happen. These people are going to get up to God for the great white throne. Say, God, I lived a pretty good life. God, I went to church. God, I, I, I taught Sunday school. God, I, I was a good mother and a good father. And, and, and I provided for my family. And I, and, I, and I paid all my bills. I did all these things. And I went to church. And I, and I did all these things. And God's going to take His word. And when He compares their good life, compared to this perfect word, you know what's going to happen? Every mouth is going to be stuck. For all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Will anybody be able to attain God's word? Will anybody say, no, I lived good enough to get good See, Here's the measuring rod. These Catholics and these, you know, repent of your sins, Baptists, and these Lords of Salvation, you know, people, and all these other religions, and the Jehovah's Witnesses, and the Mormons, and everybody who wants to teach you that you're saved by work, they're comparing themselves among themselves. And look, if you want to compare your life to my life, yeah, you're pretty good. But when you compare your life to God, that's the measuring rod. It's not why well, I'm better than so and so. Is do I match up to God? And no one will match up to God. And God will judge them by their works, and they'll be found guilty. They'll be found wanting. They'll be found needing punishment for their sin. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. This is what Jesus calls hell. A furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. They'll be judged for their words. They'll be found guilty. And then they'll be cast into the lake of fire. And then what God's going to do is he's going to actually remove hell out of the center of the earth. And he's going to put it into the lake of fire. That's what he says. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Forever. When people die and go to hell, they go to hell forever. When they get cast into the lake of fire, they go to the lake of fire forever. Say, Pastor Jimenez, where are we going to be during the Great White Throne? Well, let me show you something. From whose face the earth and heaven fled away. Notice, when God begins the Great White Throne Judgment, the earth and heaven, they fled away. They went away. And there was found, make note of these two words, no place for them. You know what the Bible says? It says that the Great White Throne Judgment... Earth is going to flood away. Heaven's going to flood away. And there's going to be no place. You know what that tells me? There's nowhere for us to go. You say, well, I don't want to be at the Great White Throne Judgment. I'll just, you say, God, I'm just going to hang out in heaven while you take care of this. He said, no, 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 heaven's flood away. 
You know when we preach and teach about, man, you got to get out soul winning, and you got to go out and preach the gospel, and you say, ah, I don't really have time for that, or, you know, Saturdays are really my gardening day, and I, you know, I don't really like that, or that's not my thing, or I'm not, you know, like, God didn't give me that gift. Here's the thing. The Bible says that there will come a day called the Great White Throne, where God is going to resurrect every unbeliever that ever lived. And he will, they will stand before his throne, and he will judge them. And you and I will be standing there watching. And you know what? You know someone who does. You've got a family member. You've got a neighbor. You've got a co-worker. You've got a cousin. You've got a friend. You've got somebody who doesn't know about Jesus Christ. And when they, you know what the last thing I want in my life? is to stand at the great white throne. And watch one of my family members, one of my so-called friends, somebody I knew, stand before God. And they might say, God, I, I did so many good things, and I did so many good works, and I went to church, and I lived a good life, and I don't want to go to hell. And God didn't say, depart from me, I never knew thee, ye workers of iniquity. And the last thing I want is for somebody to look at me and say, why did you tell me? What, why are you there? You say, well, I'm not going to go to hell. Yeah, but is your friend going to go to hell? My best friend. If we, we do everything together. You preach the gospel to him? I'm kind of nervous about that. Why don't we really have the confidence? Well, you know, I'm really tired. I worked all week. Tired is my day to sleep in. You better get your act together. And figure out that there's more to life than your little garden or your little sleeping in or whatever it is you have, your excuse that you say, I can't do that. You know what I love? That when that little old Hispanic lady stands before the judgment seat of Christ, she's not going to look at this guy and say, well, nobody told me. She's not going to look at me and say, hey, do you remember I told you? I, I, I want to be like Paul. Your blood be upon your head. I cease not to teach and preach the gospel. That's good. Let me ask you this. Who are you giving the gospel to? Who are you giving the gospel to? And maybe you ought to learn how to give the gospel. And more than just learn, maybe you ought to go. Jesus Christ said this, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Say, Pastor Jimenez, I'm not going to stand at the great white throne judgment. No, you're not. You're saved. But you will be there. You will be there. What are you doing with your life? The Bible says this, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them 